Deuteronomy 31. When Moses had finished giving these instructions to all the people of Israel, he said, I am now 120 years old, and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has told me, you will not cross the Jordan River, but the Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy the nations living there, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua will lead you across the river, just as the Lord promised. The Lord will destroy the nations living in the land, just as he destroyed Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites. The Lord will hand over to you the people who live there, and you must deal with them as I have commanded you. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will never fail you nor abandon you. Then Moses called for Joshua, and as Israel watched, he said to him, Be strong and courageous, for you will lead these people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors he would give them. You are the one who will divide it among them as their grant of land. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. So Moses wrote this entire body of instruction in a book and gave it to the priest who carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and to the elders of Israel. Then Moses gave them this command. At the end of every seventh year, the year of release, during the festival of shelters, you must read this book of instruction to all the people of Israel when they assemble before the Lord your God at the place he chooses. Call them all together, men and women, men, women, children, and the foreigners living in your towns, so they may hear this book of instruction and learn to fear the Lord your God and carefully obey all the terms of these instructions. Do this so that your children who have not known these instructions will hear them and will learn to fear the Lord your God. Do this as long as you live in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. Then the Lord said to Moses, The time has come for you to die. Call Joshua and present yourselves at the tabernacle so that I may commission him there. So Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves at the tabernacle. And the Lord appeared to them in a pillar of cloud that stood at the entrance to the sacred tent. The Lord said to Moses, You are about to die and join your ancestors. After you are gone, these people will begin to worship foreign gods, the gods of the land where they are going. They will abandon me and break my covenant that I have made with them. Then my anger will blaze forth against them. I will abandon them, hiding my face from them, and they will be devoured. Terrible trouble will come down on them, and on that day they will say, These disasters have come down on us because God is no longer among us. At that time I will hide my face from them on account of all the evil they commit by worshipping other gods. So write down the words of this song and teach it to the people of Israel. Help them learn it so it may serve as a witness for me against them. For I will bring them into the land I swore to give their ancestors, a land flowing with milk and honey. There they will become prosperous, eat all the food they want, and become fat." But they will begin to worship other gods. They will despise me and break my covenant. And when great disasters come down on them, this song will stand as evidence against them. For it will never be forgotten by their descendants. I know the intentions of these people, even now before they have entered the land I swore to give them. So that very day, Moses wrote down the words of the song and taught it to the Israelites. Then the Lord commissioned Joshua, son of Nun, with these words, Be strong and courageous, for you must bring the people of Israel into the land I swore to give them. I will be with you. When Moses had finished writing this entire body of instruction in a book, 
he gave this command to the Levites who carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. Take this book of instruction and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, so it may remain there as a witness against the people of Israel. For I know how rebellious and stubborn you are. Even now, while I am still alive and am here with you, you have rebelled against the Lord. How much more rebellious will you be after my death? Now summon all the elders and officials of your tribes so that I can speak to them directly and call heaven and earth to witness against them. I know that after my death you will become utterly corrupt and, and will turn from the way I have commanded you to follow. In the days to come, disaster will come down on you, for you will do what is evil in the Lord's sight, making him very angry with your actions. So Moses recited this entire song publicly to the assembly of Israel. Deuteronomy 32 Listen, O heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words that I say. Let my teaching fall on you like rain. Let my speech settle like dew. Let my words fall like rain on tender grass, like gentle showers on young plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. How glorious is our God. He is the rock. His deeds are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He is a faithful God who does no wrong. How just and upright he is. But they have acted corruptly toward him when they act so perversely. Are they really his children? They are de a deceitful and twisted generation. Is this the way you repay the Lord, you foolish and senseless people? Isn't he your father who created you? Has he not made you and established you? Remember the days of long ago. Think about the generations past. Ask your father, and he will inform you. Inquire of your elders, and they will tell you. When the Most High assigned lands to the nations, when he divided up the human race, he established the boundaries of the peoples according to their number, according to the number in his heavenly court. For the people of Israel belong to the Lord. Jacob is his special possession. He found them in a desert land, in an empty, howling wasteland. He surrounded them and watched over them. He guarded them as he would guard his own eyes. Like an eagle that rouses her chicks and hovers over her young, so he spread his wings to take them up and carried them safely on his pinions. The Lord alone guided them. They followed no foreign gods. He let them ride over the highlands and feast on the crops of the fields. He nourished them with honey from the rock and olive oil from the stony ground. He fed them yogurt from the herd and milk from the flock, together with the fat of lambs. He gave them choice rams from Bashan and goats, together with the choicest wheat. You drank the finest wine made from the juice of grapes. But Israel soon became fat and unruly. The people grew heavy, plump, and stuffed. Then they abandoned the God who had made them. They made light of the rock of their salvation. They stirred up his jealousy by worshiping foreign gods. They provoked his fury with detestable deeds. They offered sacrifices to demons, which are not God, to gods they had not known before. The two new gods only recently arrived, to gods their ancestors had never feared. You neglected the rock who had fathered you. You forgot the God who had given you birth. The Lord saw this and drew back. Provoked to anger by his own sons and daughters, he said, I will abandon them, then see what becomes of them, for they are t a twisted generation, children without integrity. They have roused my jealousy by worshipping things that are not God. 
They have provoked my anger with their useless idols. Now I will rouse their jealousy through people who are not even a people. I will provoke their anger, anger through the foolish Gentiles. For my anger blazes forth like fire and burns to the depths of the grave. It devours the earth and all its crops and ignites the foundations of the mountains. I will heap disasters upon them and shoot them down with my arrows. I will weaken them with famine, burning fever and deadly diseases. I will send the fangs of wild beasts and poisonous snakes that glide in the dust. Outside the sword will bring death, and inside terror will strike both young men and young women, both infants and the aged. I would have annihilated them, wiping out even the memory of them, but I feared the taunt of Israel's enemy, who might un misunderstand and say, Our own power has triumphed. The Lord had nothing to do with this. But Israel is a senseless nation. The people are foolish without understanding. Oh, that they were wise and could understand this. Oh, that they might know their fate. How could one person chase a thousand of them and two people put ten thousand to flight unless their rock had sold them, unless the Lord had given them up? But the rock of our enemies is not like our rock as even they recognize. Their vine grows from the vine of Sodom, from the vineyards of Gomorrah. Their grapes are poison, and their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the venom of serpents, the deadly poison of cobras. The Lord says, I, Am I not storing up these things, sealing them away in my treasury? I will take revenge. I will pay them back. In due time, their feet will slip. Their day of disaster will arrive, and their destiny will overtake them. Indeed, the Lord will give justice to his people, and he will change his mind about his servants when he sees their strength is gone, and no one is left slave or free. Then he will ask, Where are their gods, the rocks they fled to for refuge? Where now are those gods who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their offerings? Let those gods arrive. Let those let those gods arise and help you. Let them provide you with shelter. Look now, I myself am he. There is no other god but me. I am the one who kills and gives life. I am the one who wounds and heals. No one can be rescued from my powerful hand. Now I raise my hand to heaven and declare, As surely as I live, when I sharpen my flashing sword and begin to carry out justice. Sorry, there's a little spider that was distracting me. Uh, I will take revenge on my enemies and repay those who reject me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood, and my sword will devour flesh, the blood of the slaughtered and the captives, and the heads of the enemy leaders. Rejoice with him, you heavens, and let all of God's angels worship him. Rejoice with his people, you Gentiles, and let all the angels be strengthened in him, for he will avenge the blood of his children. He will take revenge on his enemies. He will repay those who hate him and cleanse his people's land. So Moses came with Joshua, son of Nun, and recited all the words of this song to the people. When Moses had finished reciting all these words to the people of Israel, he added, Take to heart all the words of warning I have given you today. Pass them on as a command to your children so they will obey every word of these instructions. These instructions are not empty words. They are your life. By obeying them, you will enjoy a long life in the land you will occupy when you cross the Jordan River. 
That same day, the Lord said to Moses, Go to Moab, to the mountains east of the river, and climb Mount Nebo, which is across from Jericho. Look out across the land of Canaan, the land I am giving to the people of Israel as their own special possession. Then you will die there on the mountain. You will join your ancestors just as Aaron, your brother, died on Mount Har and joined his ancestors. For both of you betrayed me with the Israelites at the waters of Meribah at Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. You failed to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel there, so you will see the land from a distance, but you may not enter the land I am giving to the people of Israel. Deuteronomy 33 This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, gave to the people of Israel before his death. The Lord came from Mount Sinai and dawned upon us from Mount Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran and came from Meribah Kadesh with flaming fire at his right hand. Indeed, he loves his people. All his holy ones are in his hands. They follow in his steps and accept his teaching. Moses gave us the Lord's instruction. <sighs> Sorry, I feel like everything is trying to interrupt Bible reading today. The spider, I'm sneezing, my computer wouldn't turn on. I had to get help fixing that, that's why this video is late today, but we're, we're pressing forward, let's go. All right, Moses gave us the Lord's instruction, the special possession of the people of Israel. The Lord became king in Israel when the leaders of the people assembled, when the tribes of Israel gathered as one. Moses said this about the tribe of Reuben. Let the tribe of Reuben live and not die out, though they are few in number. Moses said this about the tribe of Judah. O Lord, hear the cry of Judah and bring them together as a people. Give them strength to defend their cause. Help them against their enemies. Moses said this about the tribe of Levi. O Lord, you have given your Thummim and Urim, the sacred lots, to your faithful servants, the Levites. You put them to the test at Massah and struggled with them at the waters of Meribah. The Levites obeyed your word and guarded your covenant. They were more loyal to you than to their own parents. They ignored their relatives and did not acknowledge their own children. They teach your regulations to Jacob. They give your instructions to Israel. They present incense before you and offer whole burnt offerings on the altar. Bless the ministry of the Levites, O Lord, and accept all the work of their hands. Hit their enemies where it hurts the most. Strike down their foes so they never rise again. Moses said this about the tribe of Benjamin. The people of Benjamin are loved by the Lord and live in safety beside him. He surrounds them continuously and preserves them from every harm. Moses said this about the tribes of Joseph. May their land be blessed by the Lord with the precious gift of dew from the heavens and water from beneath the earth, with the rich fruit that grows in the sun and the rich harvest produced each month with the finest crops and their ancient mountains and the abundance from the everlasting hills, with the best gifts of the earth and its bounty, and the favor of the one who appeared in the burning bush. May these blessings rest on Joseph's head, crowning the brow of the prince among his brothers. Joseph has the majesty of a young bull. He has the horns of a wild ox. He will gore distant nations, even to the ends of the earth. This is my blessing for the multitudes of Ephraim, and to and the thousands of Manasseh. Moses said this about the tribes of Zebulun and Issachar. May the people of Zebulun prosper in their travels. May the people of Issachar prosper at home in their tents. 
they summon the people to the mountain to offer proper sacrifices there. They benefit from the riches of the sea and the hidden treasures in the sand. Moses said this about the tribe of Gad. Blessed is the one who enlarges Gad's territory. Gad is poised there like a lion to tear off an arm or a head. The people of Gad took their best land for themselves. A leader's share was assigned to them. When the leaders of the people were assembled, they carried out the Lord's justice and obeyed his regulations for Israel. Moses said this about the tribe of Dan. Dan is a lion's cub leaping out from Bashan. Moses said this about the tribe of Naphtali. O oh, Naphtali, you are rich in favor and full of the Lord's blessings. May you possess the west and the south. Moses said this about the tribe of Asher. May Asher be blessed above other sons. May he be esteemed by his brothers. May he bathe his feet in olive oil. May the bolts of your gates be of iron and bronze. May you be secure all your days. There is no one like the God of Israel. He rides across the heavens to help you, across the skies in majestic splendor. The eternal God is your refuge, and his everlasting arms are under you. He drives out the enemy before you. He cries out, destroy them. So Israel will live in safety, pros prosperous Jacob in security, in a land of grain and new wine. While the heavens drop down dew, how blessed are you, O Israel! Who else is like you, O people, saved by the Lord? He is your protecting shield and your triumphant sword. Your enemies will cringe before you, and you will stomp on their backs. Deuteronomy 34 Then Moses went up to Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab and climbed Pisgah Peak, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, from Gilead as far as Dan, all the land of Naphtali, the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, extending to the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, the Jordan Valley with Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to Moses, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have now allowed you to see it with your own eyes, but you will not enter the land. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, just as the Lord had said. The Lord buried him in a valley near Beth Peor in Moab, but to this day, no one knows the exact place. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyesight was clear, and he was as strong as ever. The people of Israel mourned for Moses on the plains of Moab for 30 days until the customary period of mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him, doing just as the Lord had commanded Moses. There has never been another prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. The Lord sent him to perform all the miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land. With mighty power, Moses performed terrifying acts in the sight of all Israel. And that gets me emotional every time. But anyway, there you have it for Deuteronomy. I don't know why I'm so emotional right now. Uh, but yeah, we're about to dive into Joshua next, which is my favorite Joshua and Judges. Things get really intense. But anyway, thank you all so much for your fellowship. As always, feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments. <laughs> and I'll see you tomorrow.